integrate 3 over the cosine of theta minus 1. Let's go ahead and work through this carefully. So this problem uh, is a typical problem that you often see in calculus classes. And so there's a trick. Okay, there's a trick to do this problem. So whenever you have like cosine theta plus 1 or cosine theta minus 1 or 1 plus sine theta or uh, 1 minus sine theta, what you can do is the following. So we have 3 over cosine theta minus 1. And what you do is you multiply by something that will make the bottom the difference of squares. So like this, cosine theta plus 1 over and then cosine theta plus 1. Notice we're basically multiplying by 1, right? Because this, this basically cancels with itself and you just get 1. And so why did we do this? Well, watch what happens. So this is equal to, I'll write it underneath. So we can distribute the 3 upstairs. So it'll be 3 cosine theta. And then 3 times 1 will give us 3. Then in the denominator, here's the where the magic happens. This is a minus b times a plus b. And we know for math that that is a squared minus b squared. It's called the difference of squares. So your cosine theta is your a, and your 1 is your b. So you'll get a squared, so that'll be cosine squared theta minus 1 squared, so minus 1. And then we still have our d theta. Okay, so how did I know to do this? Just experience. Um, this is a problem that you typically do. If you have like 1 over 1 plus sine x dx, again, it's the same thing, except this time you use 1 minus sine x over 1 minus sine x. They're all the same. There's a bunch of problems like this that come up in, uh, in calculus. So now what do we do? Well, there's an identity, right? The, the identity is if you have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, you know that's equal to 1. And then that means that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta. So you can just, whenever you see something like this, you say, okay, I know there's an identity. So you start with this one, and then you can just manipulate this one to make it look like what you have in your problem. So we know we had the cosine squared here, so we subtracted the cosine squared. Now you'll notice it's cosine squared minus 1. So what we can do is we can multiply this by negative 1. So it'll be negative sine squared theta. And then we're just going to flip the signs, right? So it'll be cosine squared. So it'll become a positive. And this 1 will become a negative. Beautiful. So now we have what the bottom piece is. So this is equal to 3 cosine theta plus 3. Then on the bottom, we simply have negative sine squared theta, and then we have d theta. All right, getting there. Good stuff. So now we just got to break it up. I right? have to break it up into two different integrals and uh, see what happens. So the first integral is going to be um, this 3 cosine theta over this bottom piece here. So it'll be 3 cosine theta over negative sine squared theta. And again, I should emphasize that this is an integral worth learning. Like this, this comes up plus, and then the next one is 3 over negative sine squared theta, d theta. Okay, so just breaking it up. Now we want to use uh, some stuff we know from trig. So like cosine over sine is going to be cotangent. So if you look at the first integral, uh, I'm going to pull out that negative 3. So it's negative 3. I'm going to write it like this cosine over sine times 1 over sine. You can do that, right? You can do that in this case because sine times sine is sine squared. That's what gives you the bottom. Then minus 3 and this 1 over sine squared. Well, 1 over sine is cosecant. So this is cosecant squared theta d theta. Beautiful. And we can also rewrite the first one now again. This is negative 3. Cosine over sine is cotangent, theta. 1 over sine is cosecant, theta. 
and then we just have this piece here minus three cosecant squared theta d theta. So just a lot of rewriting, a lot of trig in this problem. And now we're going to go straight to the answer, and, and here's how. When you're integrating cotangent cosecant, you ask yourself, what's a function whose derivative is cotangent cosecant? Well, the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. So we already have a negative here. So this whole thing here is just going to become 3 cosecant. Let's check. If you take the derivative of cosecant, you get negative cosecant cotangent. Beautiful. And then when you're integrating cosecant squared, you ask yourself, okay, what's a function whose derivative is cosecant squared? Well, the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So we already have the negative here. So it'll be plus 3 cotangent. Oh, it's so rigged. <laughs> so rigged. Yeah, I hadn't done this problem before. I usually don't do the problems before I make the videos. I just work them out. Um, so this one was very rigged because even the negatives went away. I mean, it was really, really nice. So a harder problem, uh, but worth, uh, worth learning. And it does come up a lot. Like this integral comes up in, in different areas of math. And other variations of this might be like 1 over 1 plus sine or you know, 1 over 1 plus cosine theta, stuff like that. Uh, tends to come up a lot. When it gets harder is when like this is a 2 here and then there's a 3 in front of the cosine. That's, that's a whole other problem. So I hope this video has been helpful.